My name's Amata, and in this Red Gaming Tech video, I'm here to give a bit of an update on something that I discussed yesterday. Now, you probably saw my video on the Star Wars Battlefront 2 loot crate slash microtransaction system, and my opinions on why, in all honesty, it's a pile of hot trash. And while it's also pay to win hot trash. However, I seem to have really poor timing and bad luck, as shortly after. I posted the video, and shortly after it actually uploaded, there was an update issued by DICE on the concerns. Now, this wasn't the only thing they addressed, so I'm going to include it, the, a link to their post in the description below this video. They also addressed a few things, gave thanks for those who played the beta, that sort of thing, but most of their main points were to do with the fact that a lot of people have been, quite rightly, heavily criticising the system within the game, that being microtransactions and loot boxes. So, I'm going to go through what they've said, and I'm going to say exactly why I don't think this really changes anything that I said. So, the first thing, and this is probably one of the better things that they've said here, is that, quote, as a balanced goal, we're working towards having the most powerful items in the game only earnable via in-game achievements. Now, that is definitely... A big thumbs up. I'm not going to complain about that. That's great. You know, someone shouldn't be able to flat out buy the most powerful item in the game. That is definitely something that they needed to add, and I'm happy that they had it. But obviously, there's not just the worst item in the game and then the best item in the game. There is all sorts of shades of grey in between those two, and you can kind of get where I'm going with this because, you know, hey, I don't have the most powerful item in the game, but I have something that's like, you know, two or three tiers below it, and you've got something that's level one. I'm still way more powerful than you. So, while this is great, it only addresses, like, the worst case, in my opinion. However, one of the things I did address in my video yesterday was the slow rate in which you unlock crates, or sorry, which you earn crates, and how the game was very obviously weighted in favour of you spending money. Now, every game that has this is weighted to some degree to make you want to spend money, but obviously... They're not quite so blatant about it as this one was before all these tweaks. Um, but before we get into that, let's go with what they said. They said, quote, Players earn crates by completing challenges and other gameplay milestones or by purchasing, purchasing them with in-game credits or crystals of premium currency. So, basically, there are more ways than just completing games to unlock these crates. So, that does kind of ease it a little bit because I was like six games to get one crate is really bad um, but obviously it depends how many of these milestones and challenges there are how easy they are to unlock we're gonna have to see this in action I think before we can really see how much of an impact this actually makes but it does sound like it's less terrible than I thought to earn crates without paying but I fully have faith that because well this is EA that is still going to be weighted heavily in favour of you spending money, because, well, why wouldn't it be? Um, but again, I'm going to reserve judgement on that and say, like, okay, great, but uh, how is it going to be implemented? And we have to wait and see on that one, unfortunately. Obviously, it's not going to be too long now before it's out, so we'll see soon enough exactly how much of an impact this makes. Now, one of the things I addressed in my video yesterday was how levels and star cards are basically intrinsically linked. You, the more the higher level you are, the more star cards you can actually equip, and the level itself is linked to how many star cards you have. So basically, as I addressed in my video yesterday, you could buy a bunch of crates, get a bunch of cards, be a high level, have a bunch of cool stuff, and basically stomp all over the people who haven't done that. Now, one of the issues that is also tied to this is the upgrade system for the star cards. Now, no star card is the same as one other. The level 1 of the same card is not going to be as good as level 4 of the same card, for example. Um, there's a card for Boba Fett. Um, the level 1 is 50% less damage taken while doing his Rocket Barrage move, but the level 4 is 100% damage reduction. I'm sure you could argue that being invincible is pretty damn good, but it does seem that they are making you have to earn the right to be able to upgrade your star cards and unlock most weapons, and quotes you can only upgrade or unlock them if you have reached a high enough rank which is determined by playing the game. So basically, it doesn't stop someone from equipping a bunch of star cards, but it does kind of stop someone from just 
upgrading these star cards to the highest level without even having played the game and then obviously stomping all over you. So basically what this all comes down to is that the system is less terrible. But in my opinion it's still pretty damn terrible. Because the core of the issue is still there. You still have progression being done through random loot crates. The fact that you can earn them through play is great, but the items you need to get stronger, more powerful, level up, progress, all that, is completely RNG. That's pretty bad. But I see nothing here that makes me think the system isn't going to be pay to win anymore. It's going to be less pay to win, sure, I'll grant you that. But it's still going to be pay to win. Even a little bit of pay to win is bad. Even if this game was free to play, I would still be like, no, this is bad. And the fact that this is a full price AAA game makes it even worse. So yeah, they've they've tweet they're going to tweak it. They're going to make it less of an abomination. But it's still pretty horrible in my opinion. These improvements are great, but they don't go far enough, and in my opinion, they should not be linking progression to random loot drops. That's pretty bad. Um, I'm looking forward to seeing the complete system in the full price game. Of course, we did not see everything the game had to offer in the beta, but by no means did we see everything. So I'm going to hope that they're doing more than they're saying here, and we're going to see a radically revamped system when the game releases, but... I have a feeling that it's going to be the same system just with these tweaks in mind and it's still going to be pay to win and it's still going to be leaning towards hey it's way faster for you to pay up and it's still going to be like why are microtransactions in my full price game and why are they also giving me a direct advantage over other players who aren't. Like I get that they're not doing DLC and a season pass this time which is great after the clusterfuck of last time I think that was exactly the right move. But you don't have to go this way. Like, I don't understand why they're not just doing cosmetic items. Like, that would be, like, amazing for this game. Like, people would pay top dollar for, like, a golden Stormtrooper outfit or whatever. People say, oh, it's not canon. Like, none of this game is canon. You could have Rey fighting Darth Maul, for goodness sake. Canon went out the window the second that happens. So, I don't buy that for a second. Maybe it's Disney's influence. Maybe they don't want people getting confused or whatever. But that would be way better. Are we, like... Way more happy if this was just like, hey, you get cool cosmetics, or cool skins for your gun, or different color lightsabers, or whatever. Instead, we get gameplay affecting stuff in a heavily multiplayer focused game. These tweaks are great, but they don't go far enough, and as I said, they don't really address the core of the problem, at least in my opinion. So, there you have it, that's my updated opinion, really poor timing on... Um, on my part and their part, really unlucky as well, obviously. I don't think they even know I exist, so, you know, there is that. Um, but I don't think my points have really changed much, to be honest. Everything I said in that video is still relevant, it's just slightly less relevant in some cases, and not even all the cases, because I'm not seeing anything here that makes it seem like it's not pay to win anymore. But uh, again, we're going to have to see in the full game. I'm keeping my eyes on this one. I doubt I'll get code for it, but I'll try, so... Uh... See what you guys have to say on that. Let me know your thoughts. Uh, the link is in the description below if you want to read their post. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.